You're listening to episode 172 of Mid-America Reformed Seminary's Roundtable podcast. In this broadcast, the faculty of Mid-America discuss theology and cultural issues from a Reformed perspective. I'm Jared Luchibor, Director of Marketing. Thank you for tuning in. Today we'll be discussing an important topic in the realm of pastoral care, that being family visitation. As a pastor, one of the many responsibilities is to care for the spiritual well-being of the members of their congregation. Now, while there are many ways to do this, family visitation is a key method used by many pastors to connect with their congregants on a more personal level. Family visitation involves pastors visiting the homes of their congregants to offer support, encouragement, and prayer. During these visits, pastors have the opportunity to get to know their congregants and their families better, which helps to build deeper relationships and foster a sense of community within the church. In this episode, Rev. Paul Ipema, our new Professor of Ministerial Studies here at the seminary, will explore the reasons why pastors do family visitation, including the biblical basis for this practice and the benefits it provides to both pastors and congregants. Whether you're a pastor, a church leader, or a member of a congregation, this episode will provide valuable insights into the importance of family visitation in pastoral care. On the podcast for today, I'd like to talk about the practice of family visitation. And by family visitation, I am referring to the practice of the elders and along with the pastor uh, making regular visits to the homes of the uh, parishioners of the congregation. Uh, In uh, many traditions, that's done on an annual basis. But I would say that Uh, during recent years, that practice has fallen out of favor with many churches. I think there are several reasons for that. Uh, First of all, I think that there is uh, the constraint of time, uh, the busyness of pastors and elders and parishioners as well. We live uh, very busy lives, and so it's difficult to find time to gather for those those kind of visits. I also think that um, there is... uh, the difficulty of parishioners living further and further away from uh, the churches that uh, that they attend. And so we have a lot of commuter congregations where traveling becomes uh, an issue in terms of making those visits. But uh, I'd like to see, speak about the, uh, the subject of family visitation because I do believe it's an important part of pastoral ministry. Uh, I believe it's an extension of the ministry of the word, the preaching of the word, and really at the uh, root of the practice is uh, an attempt to assess on the part of the pastoral leadership of the church uh, the effectiveness of the preaching ministry uh, in the lives of of God's people. Um, I think one can look at the Bible and see uh, certainly a precedent for this sort of practice already in the public ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ not only preached in public settings, he He taught and he preached in the synagogue, he preached in the open, but he also made visits to people's homes. He healed the sick, Uh, he spoke with uh, Zacchaeus, and uh, there are many other instances where there was much more personalized uh, ministry that went on. And in the apostolic period, the Bible tells us that uh, it certainly was the practice or the expectation that not only the apostles, but elders, Um, would make the practice of visiting people from home to home. The Apostle Paul, for example, mentions that to the Ephesian elders in Acts 20, verse 20, about the fact that he had gone uh, from house to house. So not only did he preach in public, but he also applied that preaching ministry and teaching ministry in the context of uh, home visits. And we have in Hebrews chapter 13, the uh, exhortation to elders to do their work well and to, to shepherd God's people because they are the ones who will have to give account to the Lord for their work. I think really when you think about pastoral visitation and family visitation, the imagery that uh, seems to stand out more than anything else is the uh, imagery of, of the shepherd and the sheep. Uh, we call it pastoral ministry. We refer to it as uh, really a shepherd ruling in the name of Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd, ministering to God's people who are often referred to in Scripture uh, as God's sheep. And to do that well, uh, one has to be involved in the, in the lives of, of God's people. Um, 
I think it's very important, for example, to, uh, to make sure that the elders, the leaders of the church, get to know the congregation well. Uh, if we limit that time to uh, what takes place on a, a typical Sunday, uh, the knowledge of the congregation and the, the struggles they go through, the challenges they face, things that are happening in their lives, that, that will be very limited, I think, if all we do is have contact on a given Sunday. Sundays are so busy anyway, not only with worship, but with educational ministry and fellowship uh, as a congregation. But I think there is a place for uh, individual visitation. And so when you think of that imagery of, of shepherding, of, uh, of a shepherd watching over his sheep, uh, it speaks of the, the kind of personalized care that the Lord calls elders and pastors to do, and that uh, that ought not to be neglected because there are many things that can happen in people's lives that will remain unknown uh, to the elders or to the pastor unless there is personal contact. Uh, there also seems to be in the, the history of the church um, a, at least a precedent for this sort of thing to happen. Uh, we read, for example, of Clement of Alexandria, of Cyprian, uh, of Ambrose of Milan, all make reference to the fact that uh, it was the practice for the first several centuries of the church's history to have uh, leaders in the church making regular visits, not only to the sick, but also just uh, regular visits to, to the parishioners to see how things are going, to address any uh, specific needs that arise, things of that nature. Uh, what really began to change was with the rise of um, the Roman Catholic view of the sacraments, particularly of confession, of personal confession, where one goes to uh, the priest to, to confess one's sins, rather than having confession as part of congregational worship, you begin to see the decline of the practice of uh, pastoral visitation in the home. Uh, that really was uh, a decline that took place over many centuries until by the time of the Reformation, it was almost unheard of that you would have uh, pastors making those kind of visits because so much was done uh, by way of looking to the sacraments as the means by which uh, God's grace was conveyed. So you participate in the, in the Lord's Supper, the Mass, you go to confession, you make penance, but the idea of the ongoing spiritual care of applying the Word of God in the context of uh, a person's ongoing uh, journey in the Christian faith, that, that was really unheard of until uh, that practice was renewed during the time of the Reformation. And we read of, of many, not only Luther and Calvin, but also others who uh, made a practice of, of visiting uh, parishioners and attending to their spiritual needs. Um, I would say in terms of, of the purpose of it all, in assessing the effectiveness of the preaching of the Word, it ought not to be understood as uh, a negative practice. It ought not to be uh, understood as looking for uh, things to criticize the pastor or the preaching of the Word in a local congregation. It's simply a means of determining, is the Word having its effect uh, upon the lives of God's people? Are the people in the congregation uh, growing in godliness? Are they making use of the word in their own homes? Are uh, husbands and fathers, for example, are they being good pastors of their own homes, leading uh, by example, but also leading in terms of the reading of Scripture and talking about Scripture, praying uh, with and for their families? How is that being done? Uh, those sort of things really cannot be assessed unless there is a personal, uh, individual contact with, with the family. And um, also to, to see what has been going on in the lives of, of the members of the congregation in terms of um, what their struggles are in the Christian faith. Uh, are there things that they wrestle with uh, in terms of biblical teaching, in terms of, of uh, what, what the uh, Word has to say about the events of their own lives? And also, I think, to challenge and encourage members of the congregation to uh, participate in the communion of saints. Uh, we look at the church as the body of believers made up of many parts with many different functions, and yet they all serve a common pur purpose, and that is to, uh, to build up the body and to glorify Jesus Christ. And so uh, 
home visitation can be an excellent opportunity to, to challenge and to encourage members, whatever age group, uh, to see how they can use those gifts in ways that are uh, edifying to the, the body as a whole and to make use of opportunities uh, available at the church to grow in their faith and to, to minister to others, not simply in terms of uh, educational ministry, but uh, ministries of service, uh, ministries of diaconal need, ministries of evangelism and, uh, and missions. And those can all be excellent opportunities to, uh, to encourage the growth of, of the congregation. Uh, it's also an opportunity to see how well the congregation is understanding the word that is preached. Is it, is it clear? Is it obvious to the leadership, to the elders, that um, the preaching of the word on a regular basis is, is effective in terms of the uh, preaching of the gospel? Is the gospel clear? Is the gospel understood and received? Is it understood as good news? Uh, things of, of that nature, I would say, are important on a, a family visitation. Uh, we could also talk about uh, assessing the, the vitality of the uh, family in terms of their relationship one with another. Uh, does it appear to be a harmonious in terms of the relationship between uh, husband and wife? How are those things being nurtured in the home? Um, how about the relationship between parents and children? That often can be a very fruitful discussion in terms of the stresses and strains that uh, every family has to face, and how are they dealing with that? How are the children growing in their understanding of the gospel? Uh, is there a, a challenge perhaps for for young people to uh, make a public profession of their faith? How are they responding to the educational ministry uh, of the church? Are they, are they growing in their understanding? Are they responding positively to, to the message. And I think when, when those things are done well, it ultimately enhances the uh, overall ministry of the word in the congregation and uh, develops the spirituality of, of the local congregation in terms of becoming more Christ-like, more mature in their faith. It also assists the pastor, uh, perhaps, in addressing uh, specific needs that must be addressed from the pulpit. Um, Again, sometimes those things have to be carefully sorted through, but perhaps there, there are growing concerns spiritually that uh, are being expressed in these visits, things that perhaps the pastor uh, should address, perhaps things that should be prayed about, or uh, perhaps there are follow-up visits that should be required as well. But regardless uh, of what the, the specific situation may be, I think that when that kind of visitation is done well, it will only help um, the pastor and, and not uh, be designed to criticize him or to, to put him on edge, so to speak, in terms of, of his ministry. Certainly, it, it can be um, an opportunity for a pastor to reflect upon things perhaps that he should uh, change, revise, or improve, things that are lacking in his ministry. Uh, certainly, I can speak as a pastor when I say that um, we often have gaps in our ministry, blind spots. Uh, we too are fallen creatures, and therefore uh, we need that kind of input from others, from parishioners and from elders in particular, about what sort of things we need to work on uh, to improve our overall ministry. We never arrive in the ministry as those who are finished products, so to speak. We are always learning, always growing, and we ourselves are maturing. And so I think uh, it's important for us to have that kind of feedback as a means of enhancing uh, the effectiveness of our ministry. Um, and, and from the most basic point of view, it, it simply has the effect, especially for a pastor who may be uh, new to a congregation, it's a great way for a pastor to get to know the members of the congregation, to get to know the sheep that he uh, must care for and shepherd uh, as a minister of the word. Um, if, if he's not aware of those things, if he's unfamiliar with his people, um, it, it will limit the effectiveness of his pastoral ministry. Uh, I think about that in terms of the development we have in recent years of, of much larger churches, much larger ministries we call mega churches. I think one of the, one of the challenges is that certainly with leadership, it's 
it's very difficult, if not impossible, for a pastor to really get to know all the members of the congregation if, uh, if that pastor is not involved in the lives of, of the congregation. Uh, you know, certainly there are cell groups, small groups that meet where there is accountability, there is spiritual edification that takes place. But I think pastorally speaking, um, it is well nigh impossible um, to get to know people and what's really going on in their lives if, if one has so many people, one does not have time simply to make all those visits. I, I remember a number of years ago attending that kind of a church where um, two people were welcomed into the fellowship of the church as new members, and the pastor got their names reversed. He, uh, he was not even aware who they were. And that, that struck me as, as uh, really a, a sad thing in terms of a pastor um, not really knowing the congregation that well. He simply didn't have time to get to know hundreds, if not thousands, of people in the congregation. So I think that there is great benefit for a pastor uh, getting involved personally in the lives of his people and for them to get to know him as well as someone they can look to for, for guidance, for help, someone they can reach out to in a time of, of difficulty or trouble. I certainly think the, the last thing we want to convey to people is that uh, we as pastors are too busy um, to help the people of, of the congregation. Uh, I think at any time a pastor should be prepared to reach out and to, to make that visit when necessary. In our next episode, Reverend Ipema will be discussing how pastors should conduct family visitation, where he'll share wisdom on how pastors can conduct family visitation in a way that is meaningful, effective, and respectful of the family and their needs. We believe that this conversation will be of great benefit to pastors and lay people alike, as it provides valuable insights on how we can better care for our church communities. For more podcast episodes, you can find us on our website at midamerica.edu slash podcasts and wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Be sure to search for and subscribe to Mid-America Reformed Seminaries Roundtable. I'm Jared Luchibor. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.